every movie has deleted scenes, especially if it's going for a PG-13 rating. Whether they involve Superman, Supergirl, or one of three different Jokers, these violent, gory, and vulgar moments didn't make it into the final cut of any of DC's many films. It's easy to forget that Christopher Nolan's gritty takes on Batman never exceeded a PG-13 rating, so it's no surprise to learn that the filmmaker towed the line a few times. In an early scene of The Dark Knight, Harvey Dent and Commissioner Gordon meet with Gotham's mayor to discuss the handling of newly arrested criminals. Suddenly, though, a body dressed in a makeshift Batman suit crashes against a nearby window. Upon closer examination, the deceased turns out to be Brian Douglas, and he has a Joker card with the words, Will the real Batman please stand up, pinned to his vest. While already chilling on its own, this scene was originally conceived to be even more intense. Behind-the-scenes photos revealed that Brian's body was suspended from a rope, as shown in the final film. However, in the original version, the Joker card was not pinned to his chest, but held in place by a knife that had been plunged directly into his heart. It makes the Joker seem just a bit more brutal, but the change was likely necessary for Christopher Nolan to maintain a PG-13 rating. I'm a man of my word. <laughs> <laughs> Later on in The Dark Knight, schizophrenic man Thomas Schiff is interrogated by Harvey Dent in a particularly intense scene. Actor David Desmalchin, who portrayed the man in the hot seat, shared an interesting tidbit during an interview with The Hollywood Reporter a decade after filming Wrapped. Desmalchin recalled, Nolan said when we were shooting it, I was pushing my head against Aaron's gun, and he was pushing the gun back. I remember for a few weeks after, I had a big welt in my head and a little goose egg and black bruise. He said that was one of the moments the MPAA asked him to go back, and he had to cut out the indent from the the gun barrel on my head. Even in its edited form, the sequence remains incredibly stressful. Harvey passionately threatens Schiff, determined to find the Joker, flipping his lucky coin to determine the criminal's fate. It's an unforgettable moment regardless. But it could have been ever so slightly enhanced if Nolan had been given the go-ahead. A fantasy western with an all-star cast seems like the kind of project that should be destined for success, but 2010's Jonah Hex was riddled with so many issues that the final cut was nearly unwatchable. Rushed reshoots and excessive editing reduced what should have been an epic adventure to a mere 81 minutes in length. When it came time for Jonah Hex to stumble into movie theaters, it only managed to recoup $10.9 million of its $47 million budget. Oh, hell, Mr. Hex! There's an unscrupulous man or two paid Double that for your stinking hide! Starring Josh Brolin and Megan Fox alongside John Malkovich, Michael Fassbender, Will Arnett, Wes Bentley, and Lance Reddick, Jonah Hex secured a PG-13 rating for its violence alone. Many of the steamier scenes ended up on the cutting room floor, including a love scene between Brolin and Fox that was teased in the Comic-Con trailer. While no one but the film's cast and crew know the full extent of the sequence, it's safe to assume that Warner Brothers made last-minute edits to avoid an R rating. While it's unlikely that a love scene between a 42-year-old Brolin and a 24-year-old Fox would have salvaged Jonah hex, at least it would have made the film closer to an hour and a half. After exploring the limits of the PG-13 rating with The Dark Knight, Christopher Nolan once again tempted fate with his third Batman film, The Dark Knight Rises. The finale to the iconic trilogy showcases a significant amount of violence and action, while still avoiding excessive gore. However, according to actor Matthew Modine, his character Peter Foley could have taken things even further. During an interview on the Real Blend podcast, Modine revealed that Foley's death scene had the potential to warrant an NC-17 rating if it had been included without any alterations. In the final cut, Talia al Ghoul orders her associates to eliminate any aggressors. More gunfire is heard, and we see Foley lying dead on the ground. The original scene went very differently. Modine disclosed, The guy that was doubling me got hit by the car. They put a plexiglass thing on the front of the car, and he got hit. They had ropes to pull him into the air. But he went up, and they dropped him from about 15 feet. And the sound of his body hitting the cobblestone street in front of the New York Stock Exchange, it was sickening. After a prologue depicting Bruce Wayne's origins and involvement in the Battle of Metropolis during the events of Man of Steel, Batman v Superman shifts to the present day, where Lois Lane embarks on a perilous adventure that eventually leads to her capture. In the theatrical cut, the scene unfolds with a quick succession of action, culminating in Superman's timely arrival. Kal-El bursts through a ceiling, subdues the villain holding Lois hostage, and the scene concludes there. It's later revealed that Lex Luthor orchestrated this event as part of his plan to frame Superman, although the execution remains unclear. KG Beast Luther's henchman ends up shooting some people and retreating before Superman's arrival, making it seem like a somewhat flawed strategy. In the extended cut, Superman arrives and destroys a drone, leaving a distinct sign of his presence at the scene. Meanwhile, KG Beast's men open fire and use incendiary devices to simulate the effects of Superman's heat vision, giving the impression that the superhero killed innocent bystanders. While the added footage may still feel somewhat clumsy, it provides crucial context and a clearer understanding of Lex's intricate plan. Warner Brothers remove these extra moments 
moments to avoid an R rating, which ultimately compromised the theatrical cut. Fortunately, the longer version is available on Blu-ray for a more comprehensive viewing experience. Over the years, director David Ayer has teased a superior cut of his disappointing feature Suicide Squad, which hit theaters in 2016 and performed well at the box office despite lackluster reviews. Similar to Zack Snyder's projects, Ayer's film faced studio interference, which aimed to lighten the overall tone and remove violent content. Audiences anticipated something in line with the astonishing Comic-Con trailer, but the final product ended up being far less impressive. Although there are a handful of enjoyable moments involving Will Smith's Deadshot, Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn, and Jared Leto's Joker, it was evident that we were only witnessing a diluted version of the original vision. They said you are my guests to this handsome hunka hunka. Leto's role in particular underwent significant cuts, relegating the actor to a mere cameo. In the initial version, the Joker played a significant part in the story. His relationship with Harley was portrayed as more abusive, and his character displayed greater recklessness and violence. Evidently, the studio believed Leto's interpretation was excessively dark, so they toned down his character to secure a PG-13 rating. Would the mythical Ayer cut turn Suicide Squad from a laughing stock into a modern classic? Probably not, but the updated version would definitely be rated R. Anyone who keeps tabs on the chaotic world of Hollywood filmmaking knows all about the tumultuous behind-the-scenes struggles that plagued the production of Zack Snyder's Justice League. Although the director eventually unveiled his version of the film, complete with hours of extra footage that fans had eagerly anticipated for four years, the theatrical cut released in 2017 left much to be desired. Joss Whedon, notable for his role in the Avengers franchise, took over to supervise extensive reshoots aimed at lightening the film's tone. The resulting Justice League underwhelmed audiences and threw plans for the DCEU into disarray. If Snyder never left, would his darker vision have propelled the comic book adaptation to greater heights? Fans of the Snyder Cut certainly seem to think so. The theatrical cut of Justice League significantly toned down the intensity, offering a milder portrayal of Steppenwolf and reducing the level of gore. The action sequence set in Themyscira suffered the most from these alterations, as much of Steppenwolf's brutality was dialed back to secure a PG-13 rating. In Snyder's version, the main antagonist gruesomely dismembers the Amazon women, leaving a trail of blood on the battlefield. Another detail omitted from the Justice League theatrical cut is the scene where Ben Affleck's Dark Knight drops an F-bomb. During an epilogue sequence that was specifically filmed for Zack Snyder's version of the film, Batman confronts Jared Leto's Joker in a post-apocalyptic world dominated by a corrupted Superman. And make no mistake, I will kill you. The Justice League theatrical cut was toned down to cater to a younger audience, while Snyder aimed for a more mature and adult-oriented superhero epic. In an interview with Vanity Fair, Snyder expressed his intentions regarding the inclusion of Joker in his vision, stating, The Joker is really the only thing that I thought of in retrospect, but I will say that it was always my intention to bring Joker into that world. As Snyder speculated, the inclusion of Batman's controversial F-bomb likely played a role in pushing Zack Snyder's Justice League into R-rated territory. In a conversation with Entertainment Weekly in 2020, he shared his belief, saying, We haven't heard from the MPAA, but that's my gut. Todd Phillips' delightfully morbid Joker embraced the freedom of an R rating and a limited budget, resulting in a refreshingly unique portrayal of the Clown Prince of Crime, free from external interference. Apparently, Joker could have pushed boundaries even further, but Phillips exercised restraint in certain aspects, notably with a bathtub scene that had the potential to intensify the already restrictive rating. During a 2019 discussion, the director disclosed that several Joker scenes ended up in the cutting room floor, including the mysterious bathtub sequence. Phillips remarked, There were two or three other impromptu scenes we shot, one that is amazing in a bathtub, but I don't think we can actually include it in an R-rated movie. And it's not because it was pornographic, it was just insane. While the exact details remain undisclosed, it must have been sufficiently intense to warrant being cut from a film in which a man smothers his mother with a pillow and assassinates a talk show host on live television. Black Adam faced issues with tonal inconsistency and received mixed reviews, resulting in a tepid box office return. In an interview with Collider, producers Bo Flynn and Hiram Garcia revealed that their original plan was to portray Black Adam as a murderous anti-hero who would gruesomely kill people using his powers. Garcia explained, We really wanted to make sure that we honored the character of Black Adam. One of the things he's known for is his aggression and violence, and to do a Black Adam movie that didn't have that just wouldn't have been authentic. So we always went into this knowing that we were going to push it as far as we did. Heroes don't kill people. Well, I do. The pair mentioned moments such as Black Adam dropping a bad guy from the sky, followed by a truck bouncing over the body. There were even more instances of such brutal scenes, 10 to be exact. But the filmmakers were forced to cut them down in order to secure that essential PG-13 rating. 
You might expect that Warner Brothers has learned its lesson by now and started giving filmmakers the freedom to release their original visions in theaters. Unfortunately, in The Flash, certain scenes were trimmed due to their R-rated content, as revealed by Supergirl actor Sasha Kaye. Kaye mentioned that the silo scene originally ran much longer and featured a plethora of stunts. However, some of these stunts were deemed too R-rated and were ultimately removed. Despite the extensive use of visual effects in the scene, Kaye expressed her desire to someday see the full footage and all the stunts that were performed. Hopefully, we'll see more of her version of Supergirl in the near future, without her pulling any punches. No specific details regarding the deleted scenes were provided, but given how little of Supergirl we actually see in The Flash, including a little extra brutality couldn't hurt.